at a scant 15 and three quarter pounds per cubic meter we have from Waxahachie, Texas, Fiberglass Insulation. Come on, Pinky. I know you can do it. I believe in you. And in the blue corner, our heavyweight, weighing in at a whopping 49 and a quarter pound per cubic meter, we have cellulose insulation. <laughs> yeah, you hear that cellulose? You're gonna, you're gonna crush them. You can do it. You can do it. You got this. Hi, I'm Stacy, Marketing Director and Creative Technology Nerd at Stephen Buren Roofing, Windows and Flooring. Just a small disclaimer, I knew almost nothing about insulation uh, before I started researching this, so I had to look at a lot of science. Because previously, the only thing I had ever done with insulation, aside from know that it was already in my attic, uh, and probably in my walls, I had made stuff with it. I used foam insulation to make set pieces for a live theater. I've used cellulose insulation for paper mache. It's great for paper mache because it is effectively shredded paper. So I have used these to make prop pieces, such as these snuthers from Plaza Theater Company's production of Shrek the Musical a couple of summers ago. Okay, so in this part of Texas and part south, generally just really warm areas, we tend to worry about heat gain during the summertime most notably through windows. But the fact remains that heat loss is still an issue in the, the winter time. Since heat rises, the biggest source of heat loss in your home is through your roof and through the attic. That is where we're gonna concentrate today. And we're gonna talk about blown or loose fill insulation. Insulation works best if there are no gaps in it. And the best way to have no gaps is to blow little bits of insulation into your attic so it can fill in all those little gaps. So there are two main types of loose fill insulation. You might have guessed already that they are fiberglass, cellulose. What is this stuff? Both Fiberglass and cellulose are environmentally friendly. Fiberglass is made from glass fibers and glass is made from sand. So fiberglass is basically spun sand. Cellulose insulation is made from all sorts of stuff, mostly paper. Actually, the bag that I bought had little bits of plastic bags and stuff in it too because it is recycled newspaper and other stuff. You can see that there's all kinds of little bits and pieces of stuff in the cellulose here. And you can also see that coating. We'll talk more about that in a minute. When I began to research, the first question I investigated was about fire safety. Fiberglass is inherently non-combustible. I mean, really. Have you ever tried to use glass or sand as a fire starter? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. I uh, got. Do we have anything to help start this fire? Oh, well, I got some some newspaper, uh, and and I got some sand. Um. Yeah. Let's go with the sand. In the event of a fire, it just didn't seem like a good idea to have an attic full of shredded paper. Turns out cellulose insulation is indeed a fire hazard recognized by the Consumer Product Safety Council. However, it is treated with fire retarding chemicals, namely borates and ammonium sulfates, which is both good and bad. Good in that it won't catch fire as easily, but bad because it requires chemicals to do that. What exactly are borates and ammonium sulfates? Let's look it up. 
You probably guess that borate is boric acid. I use it at home, in my laundry. It's a primary ingredient in making gack with my kiddo, and we do use it as an inexpensive ant poison. Long-term exposure has been linked to kidney damage, and ammonium sulfate is, a, is just a corrosive salt used in fertilizer. Wait, what? Ant poison and, and, and fertilizer? Potentially 18 inches thick in my attic above my head. Hold the phone. I used that insulation in paper mache to make those snethers. I have asthma. What has that done to my lungs? Lungs, asthma. It's all right, it's okay, I'm fine. <laughs> and I will probably continue to use it for paper mache. I will just wear a mask. Asthma aside, the sort of good news is that those fire retardant chemicals off gas over time, uh, sometimes within a year, and that's not long enough to sustain any real organ damage. But the bad news is after it off gases, you're left with a bunch of shredded paper in your attic. And the even worse news is mold and bacteria love cellulose. So do rodents. Okay, so fiberglass insulation is non-corrosive. It is not combustible. It doesn't absorb moisture and so it resists mold and bacteria. Okay, let's move on to other practical comparisons like R values and settling rates. Ooh, and the weight of the material on your ceiling. Insulation's R value, or its thermal resistance, uh, depends on two things, density and thickness. Of course, actual numbers depend on brands and installation and the skill of the installers, but the Department of Energy offers a general R value of 3.2 to 3.8 per inch for cellulose and 2.1 to 2.7 per inch for fiberglass. It appears that cellulose has the upper hand here. However, let's hold on a minute. R value diminishes with settling and settle rates are printed right on the back. Let's have a look. Let's look at the fiberglass insulation first. Let's just look at the R13 stuff for right now. Installed thickness, 4.75 inches. Settled thickness, 4.75 inches. There's an asterisk here. Let's see what the asterisk says. This product shows negligible settling with no loss of R value. Now, let's look at the cellulose. R13, installed thickness, 4.29 inches. Settled thickness, 3.86 inches. That's more than a 10% settle rate. Add to that, cellulose insulation weighs three times more than fiberglass insulation. And when you add to the cellulose uh, any moisture that it soaks up, um, rodent droppings and mold and bacteria, and you have a lot of weight sitting on the drywall or whatever is on your ceiling. I know it comes down to cost. I know, <laughs> I am there. I'm building a house, I'm there. So I know what you're saying. Stacy. they have two kinds of insulation at the big box orange store. One bag, this bag is $8. This bag is $30. So of course you wanna go with the most economical option. But again, let's have a look at how far each of those bags go because it's printed right there on the bag. So 1,000 square feet at R13 in, let's look at fiberglass. We are going to need 
5.9 bags. Six bags at $30 each is about $180 for a thousand square feet. Now, let's look at the cellulose. Wow, for a thousand square feet at R13, 17.9 bags required. That's 18 bags, that is $144. So the difference actually for a thousand square feet is only $36. Are you gonna spend $36 adding more insulation later or removing the rodents? Maybe. And there you have it, folks. It was a knockdown drag out. But we have a winner! Yeah! Let's play with fire. Oh, and kids, don't try this at home. I have in front of me some fiberglass and some cellulose insulation, and we are gonna see what happens uh, when we mix them up and also when we set them on fire. Okay, first of all, let's look at the fiberglass insulation. I'm gonna fluff it up here, whoops. Awesome. Fluff it up here um, so that you can see, um, get a close up. You can see that this is just fibers of, fi I mean, it's just glass fibers and uh, dye. That's it. It is relatively dust free, no little glass particles poofing up into my face, which is good. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and stick some out here on my little plate. That's probably, that's good. Okay, now cellulose insulation. Um, lots of uh, particulate in here that, that the dust that you see coated on it is the, the fire retardants that are added to it because it is shredded paper and needs some, some sort of chemical fire retardant so that it doesn't burn as easily. But check this out. I don't know if you can see that, see these little poofs, <clears throat> poofs of borates and ammonium sulfates and little pieces of paper and other things that are poofing up <clears throat> into my face. And you can see even on the sides of the bowl how dusty it is. And you can see on the plate here probably how dusty that is. Okay, fire time. I'm going to use an ordinary butane lighter and I'm going to try. I'm going to try and set them on fire. We'll start. I have, a, I have a GoPro sitting here so you can see the fiberglass really easily. This is sand. So as expected, nothing really is happening. The only thing that I can see that is that is happening is that it's turning white. The dyes are not heat resistant. Um, little bits of fiber are melting just a smidge when I hold the flame in one place for uh, a while. Um, but that is it. There's there's hardly any smoke. There's no smoldering. No orange bits. There's there's nothing happening. Not a thing. Okay, now I am going to move my GoPro boink, and put it over here where you can see, and you can see maybe close up how dusty that is. Okay, once again, let's set it on fire. Okay. Immediately, you can see a difference. It is charring and little bits are glowing orange and there was just a little bit of a flame hanging out right there. Um, this is flame retardant, not flame proof. So given enough time with uh, a flame source, it will combust and catch fire. Um,
And you can see that it is smoldering a little bit, seeing some, some orange bits in there. And it smells really bad, by the way. <laughs> All right. Other folks have done this same experiment. I will put a link in the description below where you can find that and more information about how the, the fire retarding chemicals deteriorate over time. So all of that I will put in a link below. And there you have it. Our champion is fiberglass. In my book, anyway. Fiberglass wins hands down anytime. Uh, no. Unless you want to do paper mache, in which case cellulose insulation is fabulous. Um, just wear a mask. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll check out our other videos and visit us online at www.stephenburen.com. Have a wonderful day.